Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are going to start one more uh, one, but the last section of diagnostic lab diagnostic, and in this one we are going to talk about cardiology. In cardiology, like most of my lectures, will be about electrocardiography, and then we will talk about some other cardiological lab tests which we order in our <clears throat> daily practice. So to start with electrocardiography. ECG or which is also called as EKG Americans they call it as EKG so ECG is simply electrocardiography and or electrocardiogram it is one of the most important commonly requested test in the medical practice so by definition see it's a graphic recording of the electrical activity of the heart over time so uh, now uh, to tell you like uh, what it exactly means um, like what is why the definition is like this that it's a graphic recording of the electrical activity of the heart over time um, simply to understand this thing, we must understand the graph paper first. What is graph paper? So the graph paper, which is shown over here, and here, like, they are showing the small one. But, for example, this one is also a graph paper. So, one thing to remember in this one, see, it have big squares, and this one has small squares, right? So, simply, there is big squares, and there is each big square is divided further into small squares which are five in number so the graph paper is running from the machine coming out from the machine at certain speed so that's why this one is speed or time you can say and the marker which is moved by the electrical activity which is received from the heart will move in this direction so that's that's why it is called as you know it is the graphic representation of electrical activity of the heart over time so now why we are studying ecg or why this one is important simply because uh, it notice the heart electrical activity so this is the gold standard for diagnosis of cardiac arrhythmia Whenever there is any electrical abnormality, ECG can pick it up quickly. It can also detect electrolyte disturbances like hyper and hypokalemia. It can detect conduction abnormalities. It's a screening tool for ischemic heart disease. And it can be helpful with some non-cardiac issues like pulmonary embolism or hypothermia. Of course, like the explanation of these things will be given later. So you can see like uh, uh, these are the things which we are going to cover. Okay. So the two basic things like uh, what is action potential, what is depolarization, what is repolarization, I think like if you guys don't know, again, refer the Gaiten, read about that, very important, what are the ion changes which occurs, okay, how the action potential is generated, and, uh, and, of course, like right now, we are discussing how it is recorded. So uh, now, uh, <clears throat> I think first of all, I must tell you how they do ECG rather than, um, okay. So a standard ECG, they, it is, uh, it comprises 12 individual tracings which are called as leads okay so 
a ECG machine basically produces these tracing by comparing electrical signals from 10 sensors. Out of them, six are placed on the chest, which are called as chest leads, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. So there are six leads which are placed on the chest and one on each of the four limbs. Okay. So now, uh, how it is placed basically um, to show you that how they are placed, you know. Okay, so the leaves look like this. Okay. And uh, what happens like these leads are put on the heart in this manner. I'm talking about the chest leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. And each lead, chest lead looks the heart from um, different, you can say sides. Okay. So now uh, basically V1 is put in the fourth intercostal space, you know, right side, then V2 or fourth ICS left side. And then, you know, like there is a way to put all these things lead. So for example, you know, V6 is looking at the lateral side of the heart. So like this is the lateral side of the heart. So V6 is the one. Okay. So now, uh, there are some other leads which are put like this way that uh, uh, you can see one representation over here. See, like you know, again, V1, V2, V3. So, like this person, if he will put his leads like this on his chest, okay, V1, V2, 3 V4, V5, 6. So, he this is his heart. So, see, this one is looking the chest, the heart from these sides, or noticing the electrical activity simply in simple words. Okay, then of course there is uh, leads which are which are put on the limbs. Okay, so there are six extremity leads, three bipolar leads and two unipolar leads. So what are these basically? Uh, <laughs> this is lead one, this is lead two, this is lead three. Then there is L A R A and left leg lead. Okay. So A V L. There is A V L for the left one, A V R for the right one, and A V F for the foot. So bipolar leads record voltage between electrodes plays on the wrist and the legs. Right leg is ground. Okay, so there is positive and negative sides of this one. A lead one records between right arm and left arm. You can see lead two right arm and left leg, and lead three left arm and left leg. And then there is standard limb leads. Lead, see, this is how they are placed. You know, the negative one on the right arm of for lead one and positive is the left arm, and for lead two negative one is right arm and positive is left foot and lead three negative is left arm and positive is left foot okay so these are standard limb leads they are written as one two and three okay so um, <clears throat> so simply they are bipolar leads because they have two sensors one negative one positive Uh, see like uh, okay I think like this one will be understood later on uh, this is like about the leads v1 to v6 there are additional leads also v, v3r v3 v, v4r okay which can be placed on the right side but uh, we are not going in that 
discussion right now because they are used sometimes only so simply uh, what is the important thing of placing the leaves like this because each limb each lead is looking the heart from different directions okay uh, which for example okay now see they are they are showing you know here the unipolar leads you know AVL which is on the left arm uh, AVR which is on the right arm then there is a AVF which is on the left on the leg right so see this is the graphic representation and see they are showing you uh, these are 0 degree 90 degree 180 degree and plus so minus 90 and plus 90 so you can see like this is the AVR lead this is the AVL and this is the AVF right so the voltage of this one okay uh, now when we put these leads simply uh, this is very easy to understand by the way they are showing the heart and they are talking about the leads not the chest leads rather the limb leads so you see this is lead one so from where the why they put lead one here uh, if you will see uh, remember like how they put the lead one see like this this lead one so this is lead two so if you'll go here this is lead two okay and this one is lead three so if you'll go over here this is the lead three then this is avr this is avl and this is avf so they combine all these things right so what happens is basically uh, and these negative and positives are like what are the negative positive for the leads and uh, Okay, so these are like, you know, what are the unipolar leads and what are the bipolar leads. So basically, each lead look the heart from different uh, side. For example, V1 and V2 are looking at the septal, septum of the heart. V3 and V4, they are looking at the anterior side of the heart. V5 and V6, which are lateral, so they are looking at the lateral side of the heart. Same thing with the lead one they look the heart uh, lateral side lateral surface lead two look the heart from down inferior lead three inferior avf it is down inferior avr none or you can say right atrium okay so avl also lateral so this is how uh, you can see like see this is a septal group, anterior, lateral wall, inferior wall, okay. So these things. So every lead is looking at the heart. Um, they have, uh, they are looking the heart from different sides. For example, in a patient who have, who is having acute myocardial infarction or what we call it as heart attack, okay, myocardial infarction. So for example if you will found the changes in lead v1 and v2 so it means like septal or v1 to v2 v3 v4 it means like it is anterior septal myocardial infarction if you will found changes in these pink leads it means that there is lateral myocardial infarction if you will found changes in this leads it is inferior myocardial infarction so simply like this is the point of discussing this thing so <laughs> it is simply by this thing we can assess like which leads are showing changes so uh, of course the leads represent the electrical activity at, at various times in the cardiac cycle um, it is not easy to look at every detail each time okay so now I will tell you how the ECG looks like and what is the importance of discussing and studying these things. So see, this is the P wave, then there is QRS complex, then there is T wave, okay, in the normal ECG. And then there is the repeat of the cycle. So basically P is, uh, the P wave is what represent the depolarization of atria so the atria are contracting so uh, now uh, <clears throat> like this 
electric signal associated with, uh, you can say, electrical uh, atrial depolarization, right? It gives P wave. So as C, this one is atrias are contracting and then it will reach the ventricles and the ventricles are started contracting, okay? So it is ventricle depolarization. So now uh, P wave is formed due to atrial depolarization whereas QRS complex is formed due to ventricular depolarization. T wave is formed due to ventricular repolarization but of course if the atria is going into depolarization the atria must repolarize as well so that wave is basically buried somewhere here so that cannot be seen so this is atrial depolarization this is ventricular depolarization this is ventricular repolarization but atrial repolarization is not seen here and it is not seen on the ecgs so uh, you can see over here like if you are well familiar with the cardiac conduction system there is av sno from where the normally from where the impulses are started and then they reach the AV node and then there is some delay over here and then it reaches the bundle of his and then it bifurcates into the uh, Purkinje fibers or you can say the left posterior fascicle and the right bundle okay so it is divided right so so simply then this is how the conduction system works so of course like depolarization start from the SNO, then the right and the left atria they contract and then when it reaches the atrioventricular node and here bundle of his then of course it spread it goes towards the right and left ventricle right now why i'm i'm telling you this thing because you can see over here the p wave is formed when there is atrial depolarization and the qrs complex is formed when there is ventricular depolarization the t wave is formed when there is ventricular repolarization so you can see the colors atria depolarized so see this one is formed and ventricular are depolarized so this one is formed and when ventricular repolarization is occurring so t wave is occurring right so now uh, there will be a too much details of this one uh, you are not required to know each and everything because you will learn it with time but uh, the first bump is called as the P wave, which I told you uh, it represent atrial depolarization. Okay. Uh, now, <laughs> the important thing is what that uh, here is a lot of details are written over here, right? Like, uh, okay. Now to understand this thing, you know, why they are writing over this thing and you are thinking like maybe you can never understand this thing. Uh, that again requires to show you that graph paper. So basically the graph paper is running at the speed of 25 millimeter per second. So each small box, this small block represent 0 0.04 second. 0 0.04 four second and the big block represent 0.2 second see 0.04 plus 0.04 plus 0.04 plus 0.04 plus 0.04 make 0.2 seconds okay so which means five big blocks represent one second what it means like one two three four five this represent one second okay so one big block represent 0.2 second or you can say one over fifth part of the second one fifth second or 0.2 second and each smallest block small block a box means 0 0.04 second you can also convert this thing in millisecond for example 0.2 second is also 200 millisecond okay 200 millisecond so each small block is also 40 millisecond right so Again, this is general mathematics, right? There is nothing uh, you can say. Okay, and see, uh, in this axis, if you will see, so one small block is 0 0.1 millivolt. So what it means, two big blocks is one millivolt, one millivolt, right? So now if you understand this thing, 
easily then I would show you what they wanted to tell you here is like normally the P duration is less than 120 milliseconds 120 millisecond means what 0.12 milliseconds right 0.12 milliseconds so uh, you can see like what is 0 0.12 millisecond one two three boxes will make 0 0.12 milliseconds okay four boxes will ma make what what uh, sorry point three small boxes will make 0 0.12 seconds or you can say 120 milliseconds so four boxes will make 160 milliseconds and five bo boxes will make what 200 milliseconds or 0 0.2 seconds you can say so normally p duration is less than this and p amplitude is less than 0.25 millivolt what it means uh, simply this is 0.1 millivolt so this is 0.2 millivolt and this is 0.3 millivolt so you can say now like normally p waves are less than three small boxes right so uh, now uh, if the p wave okay now see common sense if the atria are hypertrophic what will happen they are going to generate more electrical activity so what will happen the p wave will be bigger or the voltage will be higher right or it will cross more than 0.25 millisecond it, will, it is going to cross three small boxes or more than that right so after that there is this qrs complex after that by the way there is pr interval but we are not discussing interval first rather we are discussing qrs complex first okay because remember there are intervals and there are segments and there is waves so p wave and then there is qrs wave so now qrs wave is basically uh, you can say uh, this downward dip is called as q wave this is q wave just this much and this upward going is r wave and then this small dip is s wave okay so uh, collectively they are called as qrx complex and they represent ventricular depolarization okay and then in the end like there is one more upper deflection which is t wave okay this represents ventricular repolarization and then the cycle will repeat itself right so now uh, how to like because i am not teaching you ecg rather i am telling you how to interpret this thing Whenever ECG will come in front of you, you have to interpret in this way that you have to first of all look at the how much is the heart rate, then you have to look at the rhythm, then you have to look for the axis, then individually you have to see either the P wave is normal, either QRS wave is normal, either T wave is normal. So let's go towards the heart rate first for example. There are different ways to interpret heart rate. Heart rate. There are different formulas are available. Okay, uh, so there are two ways to to see the heart rates. Okay, uh, one is rule of three hundred and one is ten second rule. Okay, what is that now? Rule of three hundred. See, the important thing is one of the way. Uh, is like what you will do you will simply check how many qrs waves are there and how many big blocks are there in between and you will divide it by 300 and you can get the heart rate why i will tell you see if see if one qrs wave is here and the other qrs wave is here okay here, see how much, how many big boxes are there in between these two Q QRS wave? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Why? Because a small part of this thing is missing over here. So all of them make six. So three hundred divided by six is equal to what? Fifty. So this person heart rate is fifty. Why? Because this one is time, right? For example, if someone have like this, see. Now you can see between these two. Uh, QRS complex, okay, the there is almost one and a half big blocks. So see 300 divided by 
for example someone have heart rate like this that uh, like the qrs complex is exactly after one block just don't ignore the rest of the issue just look at this part like each QRS complex is falling on after one big block so which means which means like uh, that if one QRS complex is here and one QRS complex is here one QRS complex is here one QRS complex is here okay now uh, what it means that uh, heart is beating every 0.2 second or in one second heart is beating how much time five times how many seconds are there 60 60 multiplied by 5 300 so see that's why it is called as rule of 300 because if there is one uh, what you can say if there is QRS complex after every one QRS complex here, 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 here. So you will divide by 300 by one, so it will become a degree of 300, right? For example, see this one. QRS complex, QRS complex, QRS complex. So one, two, three, around four. Because this is less than four, by the way. But okay, make it around four. 300 divided by four is equal to 75. Of course, it will not give you exact, but near to that so now the important thing over here is what like simply uh, nowadays you know the ECG machines are more sophisticated they they write down the heart rate above the ECG okay now one problem is what like the heart rate is not always regular it's like in this one see this one and this one and this one and this one the spacing is equal so it means like the heart rate is regular for example in this one the heart rate is regular if you will take something and measure this one and 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 this one all they are at the same distance so it means like the heart rate is regular right so sometimes the heart rate is not regular this is the rule of 300 so now, sometimes the heart rate is not regular. Then we can apply this rule of 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, and as most EKGs record 10 seconds of rhythm per page, one can simply count the number of beats present on the EKG and multiply by 6 to get the number of beats per 60 seconds. Okay, see what it means. Take How many beats are there first of all you have to count this one and then you have to multiply it by six so that will give you the heart rate this one is mostly used when the heart rate is not regular but this one is not so accurate because why because most like maybe maybe because most of the like most of the cgs they record for 10 seconds but maybe some of the cg machine they won't right so simply you know when the ventricular rhythm is very rapid either so counting large squares are easy okay or uh, counting large scales could be difficult maybe okay okay one thing is what um, see we can do one more thing I will tell you now one more thing for example this one now uh, if we will count the small squares between these two one two three four five six seven eight okay so how many small squares are there it is eight right so we can do one thing we can divide this eight into five fifteen hundred okay we can divide this one into fifteen hundred so that will also give us the heart rate for example, this one is 8, so 1500 divided by 8 is equal to around 180 beats per minute. So that is going to give us like more accurate rate. Uh, this formula is used when the ventricles are beating too fast. 
okay so this is also one of the way so you can say when the uh, ventricles or when the heart is beating slowly you can count the big squares divided by uh, 300 divided by number of big squares and when the heart rate is beating too fast you can calculate 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so simply you can do what uh, if the ventricles are beating too fast you can divide 1500 divided by 8 like because there are 8, eight small squares so it will give you the heart rate it is which is around 180 beats per minute right so this is like one of the way to calculate the heart rate so guys you know uh, when the heart rate is less than 60 we call it as bradycardia when the heart rate is more than 100 we call it as tachycardia okay so uh, this is what we do by the way okay so the other thing is heart rhythm now rhythm is very easy to check rhythm is very 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 easy to check like simply uh, as I told you that uh, uh, to assess the rhythm by the way the first thing we do is uh, oh, I want to okay for example to assess the rhythm you know the first thing uh, we have to do is to assess the P waves either the P waves are present or not uh, see what is normal rhythm normal rhythm is the rhythm which is originating from the SA node simply right if the rhythm is not originating from the SA node we call don't call it as normal now why I'm saying this thing because SA node is the rhythm generator or the action potential generator right so whenever the SA node is the one which is originating which is giving the rhythm so of course there should be P wave so whenever we are going to assess the rhythm the first of the first thing is to look at the P wave okay and the second thing is to look the P wave and its relation to QRS complex okay because maybe there are certain conditions uh, you would understand when I will go further in the lecture because in certain conditions the P waves maybe are not following with QRS complex rather P wave maybe there is a P wave over here maybe there is P wave over here maybe there is a P wave over here right so whenever you are assessing the heart rhythm always look at the P wave first and then check the relationship of P, relationship of P wave with the QRS complex remember that one P wave should always be followed by a QRS complex okay so uh, the best leads you can say in which you can assess the rhythm or which is in which like it is better to assess the rhythm is uh, uh, lead to V1 and V2 okay these are the good leads to assess the rhythm lead 1 V1 V2 and lead 2 uh, for example in this one v1 v2 and v2 okay so sinus rhythm is simply when the electric signal begins in the SA node okay and uh, uh, okay like actually all these are abnormal ECGs rather I should show you uh, a normal ECG right a normal ECG which uh, I think I can take it out from the internet right uh, normal ECG okay so uh, this is like which is said to be normal ECG okay but this one is pediatric ECG um, let's see if we can found some good one Okay, maybe like this one is, uh, wait, let me see. Okay, yes, this one is normal. Okay, so. <clears throat> let me show you a normal ECG then. Then talk on, like give you examples from that. There. Okay, now this is a normal ECG. Okay. So see uh, P wave, P wave, it is followed by QRS complex, right? And uh, now uh, you can say that you know uh, electrical signals they they start from the SA node, 
and uh, uh, which make the P wave and uh, then it should be preceded by the QRS complex and uh, each QRS complex should come at the fixed interval if the QRS not at the fixed interval so of course like it means like there is the rhythm is not normal okay now uh, I will give you the concept of interval as well for example you can see this one this is PR interval so PR interval is simply uh, uh, from the start of the P wave uh, from the start of the P wave and the time when the QRS complex is started okay see because it is called as PR interval so you can say uh, the start of the P wave until you can see the R wave right so now we measure it by counting you know when, whenever it is represented on the graph paper we can count the squares you know how much is that so the normal duration of the PR interval is 0.12 to 2 seconds or you can say like 120 to 200 milliseconds right so 120 milliseconds is how much small squares 3 200 milliseconds is how much small square 4 so normally PR interval should be between 3 to 4 boxes right so why I'm stressing on this thing because you know sometimes the PR interval is increased for example in hard blocks this thing occurs so simply we count uh, the small squares between the start of the P wave and the start of the QRS complex right we call it as PR interval so now uh, by the way sorry this one should be 5 okay because 200 milliseconds is 5 horizontal boxes right 